Myself, Dr. Jibran Ahmad presents to you Simply Pathology and today we are back with an important lecture. Today we are going to discuss in details about the WHO 5th edition updates in case of renal cell carcinoma which had come up in 2022. So this is a very very hot exam question and it is one of the favorite questions for this year. Uh, uh, long answer question that is going to come either in paper number 2 or paper number 4 in MD DNB pathology exam. So, what are the differences okay, uh, between the WHO 4th and 5th edition classification of the renal cell tumors? So, very, very importantly, as you can appreciate over here, that most of the morphological and molecular entities that were there, for example, the MIT family tumor uh, as well as succinate dehydrogen deficient RCC, so these molecular entities, they were mixed with the morphological entities. Even among the morphological entities, there was not clear-cut you know, differentiation. So, in the latest edition, if you see, if I show you, and uh, you know, in the late, latest edition, if you see, there are two groups of tumor. One is the morphological group of tumor and a newly defined, molecularly defined renal cell carcinoma, as you can appreciate. Whereas, the rest, all of them, there are the morphological type. So, this is the number one change that we can appreciate. The number two change that we will see, this is the fourth edition classification. So, the number two change that we see that in the previous edition, if you see, all the tumors were clubbed together. There was no concept of clear cell tumors, papillary like lesions or oncocytic lesions. So, this uh, particular thing wasn't there. So, if you see in the latest edition of WHO, they have divided the tumors, the morphological tumors into clear cell renal tumors, papillary renal tumors, oncocytic chromophobe renal tumors. Now, among this particular group in oncocytic chromophobe renal tumors, they have uh, you know, introduced a novel entity that is called as other oncocytic tumors of the kidney. Now, these are those oncocytic tumors which are not fulfilling the definition of either oncocytoma or chromophobe renal cell carcinoma. Then we are having collecting duct uh, tumors and we were having other renal tumors. Under the other renal tumors, again, uh, there is an entity called as renal cell carcinoma NOS where uh, you know, all the entities which are not fulfilling any of the criteria and they cannot be placed anywhere, they are placed under the renal cell carcinoma. NOS, uh, you know, heading. Now, not only this, now if you see the molecularly defined renal cell carcinoma, it is a new broad heading that has been introduced. Now, some of the entities under this molecular heading, they are, uh, you know, they are novel or new entities and some of them has been renamed and some of them are the old entities only, okay, that has been just regrouped. So, under, under the molecularly defined renal cell carcinomas, if you see, we are having TFE3 rearranged renal cell carcinoma. Now, this TFE rearranged renal cell carcinoma, it is a, not a new entity. It is an old entity and actually the previously the entity of basically your uh, 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 MIT family, MIT family translocation renal cell carcinoma. Okay, this has been renamed as your TFE3 rearranged renal cell carcinoma. Again, we are having TFEB altered renal cell carcinoma. Then we are having ALOC for mutated RCC. Now, this is a novel entity. It is a new entity that has been introduced. Then we are also having the fumarate hydratase deficient renal cell carcinoma. So, there is nothing new about it. Previously, we used to have an entity called as hereditary leomyomatosis and renal cell carcinoma associated RCC. So, this is basically has been renamed as fumarate uh, hydratase deficient renal cell carcinoma. Then we are having the previous entity that is a succinate dehydrogenase deficient RCC. So, as previously it was, it has been kept as the same. Then we were having a new entity right now that is the ALK rearranged renal cell carcinoma. It is again a novel entity that we can appreciate over here. And then we are having the SMART CB1 deficient renal medullary carcinoma. So, renal medullary carcinoma, it has been renamed as SMART CB1 deficient renal medullary carcinoma. So, we can see the new entities and we can also see that certain old entities has been retained and certain old entities with a change in the name has been retained as we can appreciate over here. Rest, most of the things, they are similar. Metanephric tumors were there as well and they are here as well. Mixed epithelial stromal tumors are the same. Renal mesenchymal tumors, adult and pediatric variety, again, is the same. The only change is that only the most specific adult mesenchymal tumors have been retained. So, over here, you can see a long list of mesenchymal tumors, okay. So, some of them which are not very specific for the kidney, okay, they are not retained. Whereas, rest of them, they are retained over, over, over here. And uh, in general, the mesenchymal tumors, they are discussed as a separate entity under the heading of MGT and urinary tract tumors. 
then we are having the embryonal neoplasm of the kidney as it was there before now this is all again also uh, you know included under the heading of the who fifth edition pediatric group of tumors and miscellaneous we are having germ cell tumors of the kidney as well so this is about the who fifth edition renal cell tumor classification and this is a very very important exam question and expected long answer question from this latest classification can be asked now the fifth edition of the who classification of the urinary and the male genital tumors introduces significant changes which can be divided under three important headings so what are these changes so there are important diagnostic updates of existing kidney tumor types new and molecularly defined entities that is there and there is a group of emerging or provisional entities now this group of emerging or provisional entities itself can act as a long answer question so let us discuss the most significant changes the first group what are the important diagnostic updates in, with regards to the existing kidney tumor types so let us first discuss the papillary renal cell carcinoma so one important change in the fifth edition is the definition of papillary rcc now it is in in 2016 it was hypothesized that uh, basically type 2 papillary rccs include different tumor entities okay so previously if you see there were two types there were type 1 papillary renal cell carcinoma and there was uh, type 2 uh, um, um, papillary rccs but in the current edition sub classification into type 1 and 2 is no longer recommended so the former type 1 papillary rcc okay is now regarded as the classic morphology of papillary rcc the diagnostic criteria for type 2 papillary rcc has been reevaluated and no more we do not consider type 2 papillary rcc at all so there is no sub classification so previously the type 1 papillary rcc they were regarded to have the classic morphology and now the type 1 the basic papillary renal cell carcinoma is supposed to have the type 1 papillary rcc morphology that is the classic morphology okay so why this has been done why this subclassification is no longer followed because many tumors previously diagnosed as type 2 papillary renal cell carcinoma now constitute independent entities so those group of tumors have become independent tumor or on its own so we are no longer following the type 1 and type 2 concept okay whatever classic morphology is there that is only defining your papillary renal cell carcinoma or the previous type 1 papillary rcc is the current papillary rcc only okay whereas the type 2 papillary rcc the the entities inside that uh, the the type 2 prcc they are now independent entities now papillary renal cell carcinoma as you know they have a classic morphology characterized by the presence of papillae with vascular cores foamy histiocytes samoma bodies but they can exhibit other appearances including predominant solid phenotype biphasic pattern with squamous alveolar cells eosinophilic cells with brisk inflammation mimicking warthin's tumor or predominant vacuolated cells mimicking clear cell rcc now clear cell papillary renal cell tumor if you see now this was this this, this is the previous entity previously this entity was called as clear cell papillary renal carcinoma so this is a big change in the fifth edition so previously the entity that is the clear cell papillary renal cell carcinoma has been renamed as clear cell papillary renal cell tumor which was introduced in the fourth edition of who now the name change was made because there are no reports of metastatic events for this indolent tumor entity so that is why the term carcinoma has been replaced by the term tumor because this tumor is very indolent and slow growing and has a good prognosis so clear cell papillary renal cell tumor is an indolent renal epithelial neoplasm composed of low grade clear cells arranged in tubules nest papillae with luminally oriented nuclei it's a low stage tumor then these tumors have characteristic immunophenotype with diffuse ck and cup like caix or ca9 staining but negative cd10 and they lack recurrent serogenetic abnormalities or any bhl gene alterations are absent over here now with regards to the chromophobe rcc they have uh, they can even have a non conventional morphology with trabecular alveolar papillary microcystic or cystic architecture but all these phenotypes typically maintain ck7 uh, ck co-expression is there okay that is very very important ck7 ck co-expression is there and characteristic chromosomal monosomies and favorable prognosis okay. now coming to the next group of changes the new categories of molecularly defined renal tumors now over here this heterogeneous group of tumors they often show significant morphological overlap with other renal tumors definitive diagnosis will require molecular study like ngs rna sequencing fish or rt pcr now under this entity there are certain new entities that have been introduced there are certain entities that are old but they have been renamed and there are certain entities which are old and they have been retained as such 
So the first important is your TFE3 rearranged renal cell carcinoma. Formerly, it was named as MITF family of XP11 translocation RCC. So the essential criteria for the diagnosis is a strong nuclear labeling for TFE3 by IHC and a clean background or TFE3 rearrangement should be demonstrated by break apart fish or TFE3 uh, gene fusion should be identified by RNA sequencing. It is a heterogeneous tumor in younger patients with mixed papillary and solid architecture, presence of samoma bodies and clear to eosinophilic cytoplasm. Now this TFE3 rearrangement with more than 20 different gene partners creates fusion subtypes with very variable tumor morphology, immunoprofile and clinical behavior. The survival of patients with, 11, uh, uh, with XP11 translocation RCCs is similar to that of patients with clear cell RCCs but significantly worse than those of patients with papillary renal cell carcinoma. Now the next entity that is a TFEB rearranged RCC. So this tumor has either a translocation or a amplification involving the TFEB gene. Now TFEB rearranged or uh, translocation RCCs, they harbor fusions involving the genes encoding this transcription factor typically via a translocation 611 resulting in MALAC1 TFEB fusion and TFEB amplified RCC. So this was the rearranged or the translocation variety and there is an amplified variety. So the amplified uh, TFEB amplified RCCs, they demonstrate amplification of 6P21 locus which is harboring this TFEB gene resulting in TFEB overexpression and its downstream effect. So TFEB translocation RCC, it is a low stage. So the first group that is the translocation variety, it is a low stage indolent biphasic neoplasm with nest of large clear cells and smaller cells clustered around the basement membrane material whereas the rearranged variety whereas the TFE uh, no whereas the amplified variety if you see the TFEB amplified RCC it is often high grade and high stage tumor with frequent oncocytic and papillary morphology affecting older patients okay so this is something new over here now we are also going to see the next entity that is the ELOC mutated RCC which is a novel entity now, ELOC mutated RCCs, they are RCCs that harbor mutations in the ELOC gene at 8q21. It develops because of biallelic inactivation of TACB1 or ELOC on chromosome 8, which encodes for elongancy of the VHL complex with intact VHL and mTOR pathway genes. So, the VHL and the mTOR pathway genes are intact over here. It is an uncommon but indolent clear cell tumor with solid and papillary growth patterns and nodular appearance because of traversing fibromuscular bands and septa. Morphologically, they mimic conventional clear cell and tuberous sclerosis associated RCC. So, morphologically, they mimic the conventional clear cell and tuberous sclerosis associated renal cell carcinoma. They are consistently immunoreactive for CK7 and can have focal positivity for high molecular weight cytokeratin. Next, we are having fumarate hydratase deficient RCC. So, this is an old entity only. It has been renamed from the previous entity of heredity leomyomatosis associated RCC. It is an aggressive tumor with mixed papillary, solid, tubulocystic, and cribriform architecture composed of high grade cells with cherry red macronucleoli. Now, majority of the cases show germline or somatic FH gene mutation that should be suspected with immunostaining demonstrating FH protein loss and or 2 succinocysteine gain. These are the classical molecular alteration which is seen in this deficient RCC. Succinate dehydrogenase deficient RCC, again this is pre was there previously also. So this RCC, it is a malignant renal epithelial tumor composed of bland cells with eosinophilic cytoplasm characterized by loss of IHC staining for SDHB. Now the red, it is a red tumor with a distinct solid morphology of bland eosinophilic cells with bubbly inclusions. Loss of SDHB protein expression and germline mutation in this gene complex is, uh, uh, is seen and uh, the majority of this SDH uh, deficient RCC is demonstrated uniform low grade morphology and they have a favorable prognosis. Now the next important entity, the molecular entity is ALK rearranged RCC which is again a novel or a new entity. It is a very rare group of extremely heterogeneous eosinophilic tumor which develops because of fusion of anaplastic lympho uh, lymphoma kinase gene mutation at 2P resulting in ALK protein overexpression. Four well-characterized cases with VCL-ALK gene fusion are distinctive in that they have affected young patients who are having sickle cell trait and have a distinctive morphology. These neoplasms are typically well circumscribed and they may have chronic inflammation at the periphery. They are composed of polygonal neoplastic cells with abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm and often striking vacuolation. They may show cytoplasmic vacuolation, solid papillary or cribriform architecture with mucin production. 
Some of our bodies, metanephric like rhabdoidal spindle cell morphology can be seen over here as well. Then we are having the SMARC CB1 deficient renal medullary carcinoma. It is a high grade infiltrating adenocarcinoma that is SMARC CB1 deficient. It is renamed from renal medullary carcinoma. Again, it is an old entity, but it has been just renamed. It is highly aggressive medulla centered adenocarcinoma predominantly affected patients uh, pay, uh, uh, who are having sickle cell trait and who are of African ancestry. Presents as locally advanced a metastatic disease with fast growing infiltrating tumor composed of cords, nest, tubules and cribriform structures in a desmoplastic background with this mitosis. Loss of smart CB1 or INI1 or SNF5 or BAF47 protein expression on IHC. Okay, reflects inactivation of smart CB1 at 22 few by chromosomal translocation or deletion. Now we are having a, a, a separate group of tumor that is the eosinophilic solid and cystic RCC. Now this is a, again a very new entity or a novel entity under the other renal tumor category. Now eosinophilic solid and cystic uh, renal cell carcinoma is characterized by solid and cystic architecture eosinophilic cytoplasm and coarsely granular basophilic cytoplasmic stippling as well as frequent focal or diffuse immunoreactivity for CK20. There is usually alteration of TSC genes which is present in this group of tumor. So originally described in patients with tuberous sclerosis complex but it can occur sporadically because of TSC1 and 2 mutations. It is an indolent group of tumor disproportionately affecting women with only rare reported metastasis. They have a solid cystic architecture with voluminous eosinophilic cytoplasm and coarse basophilic granularity. CK20 and cathepsin K are positive and there is lack of CK7 CK expression which was basically seen in the chromophobe variety of RCC, okay, which was present in chromophobe RCC. Now, the next important entity which can act as an important long answer question in the exam are the emerging or the provisional entities. So, what